Failure to Thrive, Wikipedia Audio Failure to Thrive, more recently known as faltering weight or weight faltering, is a term used in pediatric medicine, as well as veterinary medicine, to indicate insufficient weight gain or inappropriate weight loss. When not more precisely defined, the term refers to pediatric patients. In children, it is usually defined in terms of weight, and can be evaluated either by a low weight for the child's age, or by a low rate of increase in the weight. The term failure to thrive has been used vaguely and in different contexts to refer to different issues in pediatric growth. It is most commonly used to describe a failure to gain weight, but some providers have also used it to describe a failure to grow, or a failure to grow and to gain weight. As used by pediatricians, it covers poor physical growth of any cause and does not itself imply abnormal intellectual, social, or emotional development, although it can subsequently be a cause of such pathologies. The term has been used in different ways, and different objective standards have been defined. FTT is suggested by a fall in one or more weight centile spaces on a WHO growth chart depending on birth weight or when weight is below the second percentile of weight for age irrespective of birth weight. In children whose birth weight was between the 9th and 91st percentile FTT is indicated by a drop across two or more centile spaces. Weight loss after birth is normal and most babies return to their birth weight by three weeks of age. Clinical assessment for FTT is recommended for babies who lose more than 10% of their birth weight or do not return to their birth weight after three weeks. FTT may be evaluated through a multifaceted process, beginning with a patient history that notably includes diet history which is a key element for identifying potential causes of FTT. Next, a complete physical examination may be done, with special attention being paid to identifying possible organic sources of FTT. This could include looking for dysmorphic features, abnormal breathing sounds, and signs of specific vitamin and mineral deficiencies. The physical exam may also reveal signs of possible child neglect or abuse. Based on the information gained from the history and physical examination, a workup can then be conducted, in which possible sources of FTT can be further probed, through blood work, x-rays, or other tests. Diagnosis Traditionally, Causes of FTT have been divided into endogenous and exogenous causes. These causes can be largely grouped into three categories, inadequate caloric intake, inadequate nutrient absorption, and increased metabolism. Initial investigation should consider physical causes, calorie intake, and psychosocial assessment. Infants and children who have had unpleasant eating experiences may be reluctant to eat their meals. Additionally, force-feeding an infant or child can discourage proper self-feeding practices and in turn cause undue stress on both the child and their parents. Psychosocial interventions can be targeted at encouraging the child to feed themselves during meals. Also, making mealtimes a positive Enjoyable experience through the use of positive reinforcement may improve eating habits in children who present with FTT. If behavioral issues persist and are affecting nutritional habits in children with FTT it is recommended that the child see a psychologist. FTT was first introduced in the early 20th century to describe poor growth in orphan children but became associated with negative implications that often incorrectly explained the underlying issues. Throughout the 20th century, FTT was expanded to include many different issues related to poor growth, which made it broadly applicable but nonspecific. 
The current conceptualization of FTT acknowledges the complexity of faltering growth in children and has shed many of the negative stereotypes that plagued previous definitions. Causes Treatment History